I see that your trip to the void has brought you safely to the steppes of Lahine. The home of Vorpal Tales. But we all know that the void is a dangerous and somewhat beautiful place. Powerful. With the power, with enough C4 to blow a hole in the world. So welcome, everyone. You have indeed made it to Vorpal Tales, where we present plethoras of terrifying tales and awesome adventures for your viewing pleasure. I am Jack Traven. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi, and I will be your arbiter for this evening. As always, we are continuing our playthrough of the new Black Void under nebulous skies. If you so love what Vorpal Tales has to offer, make sure that you seek us out all over the internet. And don't forget to follow us here on Twitch. Check out our archives on our YouTube channel and make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell. Make sure you guys visit our webpage, VorpalTales.com, that has links to all of our social media, our Discord, and of course, our Patreon. Make sure that you check out the calendars to ensure you don't miss any of your favorite shows. A lot of new ones have just started. And if you guys are looking to increase your RPG and dice repertoire, make sure you check out the affiliate link on our webpage so you can see all the cool toys offered up by Hitpoint Press, QU Empire, and Gem Hammer and Sons. Also, check out our merch store. You can put all of your favorite Vorpal Tales logos, all of your, your favorite household items. Shout us tonight. Go to Astral Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that we will be exploring the void in. Thank you to Modifius and Black Void Games for bringing the wonders of the void to our table. Much love goes to Love Your Rebellion, a nonprofit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Please be sure you guys check out their website, loveyourrebellion.org. As always, much love goes to our Patreons, from the Snickersnacks to the Jabberwockies. You guys help keep this project moving forward, and we send our hearts out to you. And last but not least, thank you to all of our subscribers, our viewers, and our fans. We love you all. But before we dive into our story for this evening, let's meet our players who will be facing the horrors of the void. So why don't you guys introduce yourself, tell everyone where you can be found, and who you will be playing this evening. Hello, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And tonight, I will be playing Omesh the Mystic. Hi, I'm Eric at Maron Recluse Online. And tonight, I will be playing Ramiel the Fallen Watcher. Hello, my name is Ray Alexa, and I will be playing uh, Bianca Westmore. Hey there, I'm at Space Lord PJs, and tonight I will be playing the cat person Sniffs the Fine Grass. Hey, I'm Dave, and tonight I will be playing Rejdan, the Jankin uh, Swordsman. Hey folks, I am Selkie, my pronouns are she, her, and I will be playing Calliope. Beautiful. Now, if Eric would be so kind as to re regale us with the short happenings of what happened last week, as they best will, you can. It is indeed very <laughs> short, but yes. Uh, the group was commissioned by uh, Chana to find a group of missing void travelers who were last seen being dragged into a building in the territory of the Beggar King and his court. Omesh used magic to destroy the opening of the hovel, the group was able to find a hidden passage that led down into the bowels of this lair and into a large uh, flooded hallway. Uh, Ramiel and Omesh then uh, split off from the rest of the group to find a tribe of gibbering cannibals and proceeded to immediately attack and decimate them. Sniffs the good grass and his roguish friend Bianca snuck up on and assaulted two sentries killing one instantly by eviscerating, eviscerating their ankles while the other was able to successfully get away. Short but the sweet. End. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot of, uh, a lot of combat that last uh, session. But uh, hopefully we will see more 
Because I like combat in this game. It's fun. Oh, Astral's doing that weird thing where he keeps muting. No. Oh no. I can hear the music. Actually, if you yeah, pop it out into its own thing, it tends to work a little better. It is. Read it again. Weird. Anyways. So, with <clears throat> Ramael and Omesh uh, standing over the body of what you had decided was the leader of this quite large band of uh, humanoids, along with many of his now dead companions, you still see a small group of them kind of cowering, huddling, clawing at the wall as there is no exit from this giant cavern. Mm -hmm. Romeo uh, looks to Omesh somewhat expectantly and it's like, well, what are you waiting for, young mortal? And then he points to the, the arm, the yellow armband that the, the leader was wearing. Uh, yeah, what does he do with that? Well, I don't know if you expect me to speak to those things, but... I was expecting you to command them. Isn't that how, how you mortals operate? You destroy one another, and then once you destroy the leader, you usurp their power, and then you control the group. Is that not how this functions? Is that not why we did what we did? <clears throat> he looks around to, like, the <laughs> destruction that we wrought on the, uh, the cannibals. Accurate. Very accurate. Uh, no, I knew it was part of your... I knew it was part of a greater plan. Yes? <laughs> Which picks up the the ribbon on the leader, holds it up, and just kind of points to the bodies, trying to just use a force of will, just saying, like, get those bodies, bring them here, without speaking to them, because there seems to be a language barrier. You're talking about the, the remaining survivors? The remaining survivors, yeah. We're trying to get here? away. Uh, okay. Do you want to do this magically or just via words? There is no magic here. I'm just screaming at them. Just, <laughs> hey, bring them here. <laughs> just trying to pantomime it. Like, bodies here, now, ribbon. <laughs> oh, that got really loud. Uh, okay. Why don't you, uh... Imagining an intimidation presence. Yes, yes. A, yes, a definitely a, a presence. Uh, intimidation, if you have it. That's a one. Oh, shit. I get negative one on this roll, so that's zero. Total. Oh my. It's not going well yeah so <laughs> your words echo uh through the cavern and even down the hallways where uh sniffs and bianca can you can you can hear omesh yelling for the bodies to come hold up key did you get a re uh did you get any um audience posts uh, last week do you want to re-roll that? <laughs> no, this isn't worth it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, am I still passed out from when I miscast my magic? No, no, you have, okay. uh, by now, you have regained consciousness. Got it. Okay, cool. Kind of pick myself up, dust myself off. Look at beyond. You do have a splitting headache, though. Yeah, just listening to the yelling in the distance and, like, even as far away as it is, it, it just still it hurts my head. And just hold it. And like, what is that one griping about? But uh, Omesh, your your words have no effect on the Akak. 
Must more of them die? No. They seem to have understood what happens when they resist. <clears throat> They're just cowering. They are. You can see some of them are trying to hide behind, you know, stones. Uh, some of them even pick up some of the uh, the skin that is left over from one of their meals and tries to hide underneath it as if it was a, you know, a protection blanket. Protection skin. Uh, Nomesh sighs as he walks towards the pile of bodies and with a candle in hand starts looking at them, trying to see if any of them look mostly human. Hmm. So when, when you look at the, you mean the actual bodies that they were eating? Like the bodies, the, yeah, their meals. Their meals. So yes, uh, a couple of them do look very human. Uh, based on their clothing, uh, you can tell that they're either some type of rogue or maybe some type of gang member. You don't recognize... You know, the, the clothing's pretty torn up, but you can definitely make out that it is at least three distinct individuals within these piles. Do we know how many of these uh, Void Traveler companions were missing in total number? There was supposed to be like six or seven. Okay, so this is like half, perhaps, of the, uh, the total. Hmm. If these were the ones that we were looking for, then perhaps there is hope yet to find the rest before they've been consumed. Hopefully. Perhaps we should find the others. But tell them of their fates. Perhaps we should bring the bodies. This can Just be in case they aren't who we're looking for. Uh, just gonna like grab a hand. And I a can torso. grab several of them, probably. <laughs> yeah, I just like, <laughs> just like levitate the bodies. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's not really bodies, as in you're you're levitating Me. masses of organs, <laughs> and you know, fingers and hands. These bodies have been totally torn apart. I look for anything that might be. Um, identifying of each person like oh maybe a special brooch or a gold tooth or something like that that would you know indicate to somebody like hey look joe's dead sorry you know like <laughs> uh give me observation the observation. observation and awareness I'm not terrible at that uh awareness i get a ooh, i get a plus Plus one for that, so I get plus one for the skill. I got a nine, I got a ten, I got an eleven. All right, so further investigation of the clothing. Uh, you do see that there is a an odd kind of uh, like an eye that is half open and half closed, but it's so black that it almost uh, like matches the clothing. Uh, very easy oh. to be looked over by someone who's not specifically looking for it. I pull it out. Uh, roll lore, common lore, if you have. Oh, I do not have common lore. And roll it at a minus three. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's intelligence based, or that I... is uh, <clears throat> yes, intellect, yes. Oh fuck! All right, I got a seven. Uh, yeah, that's what you needed. <laughs> All right. So you do, uh, you know, thinking back, you do recognize that this is the, uh, like the emblem of the shrouded Israel the gang that supposedly had taken these travelers. Ah, these are not the ones we're looking for. These were their captors. 
Look at their eyes. If the others are the same, then I'll just I'll, I'll uh, inform Omesh that their, you know, uh, their remains are inconsequential, and then we should just proceed to find the others, inform them of what happened in the chamber, keep looking for the rest. Once you tell Omesh, his attention immediately turns towards that pool of water in the middle of the room. Kind of shudders and nods. Yes, that's. All right, so the two of you beat feet back in the direction that the other two had gone. And as yeah, you I enter... Believe, I believe we went straight and they went left at the junction. Yes. So you come back down that uh, three-way corridor and head in the direction that they had gone. And you two enter uh, another large cavern Similar to yours, except this one does have a earthen ramp that goes up. And at the top of that ramp, you can see Bianca. However, you do not see Sniffs. Hmm. Where has our feline friend disappeared to? I don't know. Well, uh, maybe he found a mouse chase. <laughs> Aren't I just up the stairs? <laughs> Yeah, you're just out of the stairs. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, did I just get snagged and miss a side message or something? Uh, <laughs> up here. <clears throat> oh, he found his mouse. He's a dead body. He's uh, like, huh. Not that type of cat. I see that you found the violence, or perhaps the violence found you. Mm, little column A, little column B. We found more of the captors than the other chamber, but none of the people that we are looking for. Did you tie up the loose ends? Hmm. I suppose so. You look so mesh. <laughs> Those that do remain will not be speaking of what happened there. You left them At alive? Least. Well, they are small aquatic beings. Witnesses. They do not speak Darish. They do not speak anything intelligible from what I could see. Just because you can understand them doesn't mean others can. Primitive cannibals. They're of no consequence. Mm. Shall we proceed? Motions to the stairway. Uh, Yanka will wait for others to climb the steps. Stairs. My weakness. <laughs> May you fall down no them. Mesh walks up. <laughs> Do you need assistance? <laughs> no, no, it's He it's unfolds fine. His, his wings. Ah, very well then. So once you reach the top of the stairs and rendezvous with uh, Sniffs of Fine Grass, uh, now that you are not in a moment of combat and have a moment to take in the surroundings, you see that it is a very open, uh, kind of inviting type of uh, a simple room. You know, very sparse furniture, small table, some stools where most likely the two brigands were sitting. Uh, there's a door out of here, like further on, right? Like where the guys escaped at. Yes. Uh, want to go close the door and kind of shove a chair up against the handle just to create a blockage for the moment in case they're bringing back uh, friends. Okay. So Sniffs grabs one of the stools and is able to shimmy it up against the door at the uh, the far end of the far end of the room. One of the Sniff says you as you are closing that door and you know blocking it, you notice several dark puddles 
on the floor leading into the next chamber, like through that door. Hmm. Um. Kind of touches it with a paw, licks it. Mm, definitely cocaine. Tastes like copper. <laughs> the other guy got away, but I managed to stab him in his kidneys. Oh. He is leaking now. He <laughs> looks at the <laughs> blood trailing <laughs> away. <laughs> Not for long, though. These frail mortals don't last very long once they've been punctured. It depends where they're punctured. <laughs> Speaking of punctures, and how many times? Been punctured? No. He doesn't wait for an invitation. He just sort of, uh, you know, redraws his sword and uh, throws back his. Uh, tattered black uh, mantle and uh, folds his wings back in since we're in tight confines and he leads his way into the next uh, section. Does anyone have the anatomy skill? Hmm. That's a good question. Anatomy? It's a good anatomy. Skill. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize that was a skill. It is. <laughs> no. There's wow. a skill for shoemaking in this game. There's a skill for everything. Yeah. <laughs> shoemaking. Is there a skill for basic math? Because. Like. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. E. I mean, like, your character literally does kills people with math. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Fractions. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, no, you just, you just kind of slough off these dark puddles <laughs> and, uh,. You're standing at the door that Sniff's head blocked. Push it open. As you push it open, this door seems to uh, connect to a... What could only be described as a type of storage room. You see barrels and boxes immediately as you come in. Uh, it's fairly dark, and immediately you hear conversations coming from far within the room. He holds his hand like this to stop everybody, and he mo he, he kind of like gestures to where the sound is coming from. He waits for a sniff or uh, Bianca to make a move. Kind of uh... hanging back. I've already been stabbed once today. <laughs> Oh, you've been punctured here. Let me help oh. you. Uh, or no. I punctured myself. <clears throat> Long story. So the kids are calling it these days. Uh, Bianca. No, wait, no, she wouldn't. Um, wait, actually, yeah. Bianca. Uh, uh, how, how far away is the noise? You can't really tell. I mean, the, the room is a bit echoey, and you can't actually see where it's coming from, as there's barrels and other boxes blocking your way. It kind of winds in and out, almost maze-like. We should just be quiet as we move forward. See if we... if the distance so that the sound changes and then I'll investigate. If that is the case, I'm going to need... Oh, you're muted, Eric. Sorry, I was just saying, I, I, use, I use my wings to just, you know, hover a few feet off the floor or whatever, just because I'm, I'm noticeably large and potentially clumsy. I don't want to fuck up their, their stealth uh, approach. All right, everyone else, give me stealth. Ooh. Oh. Stealth and agility. I'm back. What is it? You're rolling under your two numbers? Added. What? 
you're rolling under the threshold of your two numbers added? Is that what it was? No. It's a DC set by me. Oh. I got a nine. Wait. The bonuses add to the roll, right? Is that what it is? Correct. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, Agility. Two. Fourteen. Ten. It's a two. <laughs> a two? A two. <laughs> I defy myself. Where is that? Fourteen. Okay, so with Ramael floating above the ground, not even making a sound as he moves. And Sniffs and Bianca moving as quietly as they can. Omesh accidentally knocks over uh, a couple of bottles that seemingly are sitting unsecure on one of the shelves. They go shattering to the ground. Could I attempt some mysticism very quickly to try and catch the bottles midair? Yes, this is going to have to be instant. <laughs> Oh and I also instinctively react and try and grab them. Difficulty 11 mysticism to float them to the ground. And that's a 12. So Omesh rits his teeth, throws out a hand, and the bottles slowly go back down to the ground. Even though the bottles don't shatter, the fact that you did hit the shelf, the speaking stops for a split second, and you hear a voice go, Did you hear something? No. And then they go back to speaking. It's a, a mix of a couple of different dialects now that you've moved further in. As you continue to move through the the wave this way and that, the maze of boxes and barrels, you come up behind a, a group of three individuals that just seem to be standing like kind of close to a pile of something. Maybe rags. very uneven more of a tarp uh Romeo will try to wordlessly uh, uh, mime to the others like you could take that one and you could take that one and I'll take the other two or whatever you know like I'll just we'll divvy them up between us Making the assumption we're just going to go in and murder these people. No, we don't want to be noticed. What languages do you have, My, Omesh? Omesh just has High Darish and Low Darish, which is what everyone usually speaks. So I have the fancy talk and the not fancy talk. Okay. Well, the fact that you have the high fancy talk you are able to understand what these are talking these two of them at least are talking about it seems they're having a, a disagreement about remnants of their former comrades and it kind of like peaks interest as you hear that and you see that there's more of that black ooze like seeping from underneath the tarp. One of the men start to argue that they should have 
that they should just feed them to the Akak. They should have the slaves carry them to the uh, nearest ragged catharsis temple as an offering. The other one you can't really understand. Let's make some gibberish. The others don't seem to agree. Then from out of nowhere, a fourth walks from one of the adjacent halls and completely changes the subject. Still listening and still catching the high darsh. They start to recount a recent attack that was carried out by highly trained assassins. They don't give any specifics. That would be too obvious. But they were allotting this assassin. Does it look like now, they're now, coming? Now do we destroy it? Does it look like they're coming towards us, or no? They're just standing over this this heap. Oh, okay. I feel like we should wait. Mm. Going to move whatever is under that tarp. When they do, that might be a perfect time to strike. Ah, there will be more coming. Don't want to be noticed. The longer we stay here, the more likely we are to be noticed. <clears throat> they continue to speak about how the assassins had come into this very building. Ooh. But they don't it's know where the assassins. They, they know that they did not go into the dungeon. They don't know what or who they've got down there. Or, you know, if they had any specific instructions to stay out of there, they don't know. But it seems like this assassin, while murdering a few, did take some of the human captives that they had. Are they talking about the the little uh, Mergle things? <laughs> no. Okay, so they're they're actually talking about what they think are assassins. Yeah. Okay. Are they re are they referring to us? Not that you can tell. Okay. Uh. And nobody's talking about how their kidney really hurts because it just got pierced by a dagger? No. <laughs> huh. Okay. Interesting. My kidney was tickled by a knife. It was weird. Oh, God. Uh, Who is your leaking friend? <laughs> okay. It, and it sounds like there's some distance between where the voices are coming from and us, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, it, yeah. it has gotten closer as you've moved into the room. Okay. But it's further. It, it doesn't sound like they're getting closer to us, though. No. Okay. Um, you can see them by now. Oh, we can. Okay, yeah. cool. And they're just milling about looking over this heap that's on the floor. Yeah. Hmm. Having a conversation. Cool. Where did the trail of blood end exactly? It looks like that that heap, whatever they're standing in front of. Oh, wow. talking about that body specifically, bringing it to the red. I think. Narcissus. I think they are blocking the way to another area. That's where you will find your uh, quarry.
out of nowhere, a un or a masked voice from further inside the complex uh, interrupts the conversation that they're having. All you hear is uh, a dialect that you're not familiar with. All of them jump up, you know, surprised at first, and run out one of the doors in the rear of the room towards the voice. But as they leave, one of them uh, passes by a, another figure similarly draped in canvas, uh, but seems to be sitting on a bench. And he just kicks it and then leaves the room. Could it creep into the room now, now that they're all gone? The room is empty. I would like to stealth. You are already stealthed. Look under the heap at them on the floor. Is it kidney yeah, guy? Up. Look underneath the tarps. No, it is not kidney guy. Really? But it does seem to be a total of about seven corpses. Whoa, that's a lot of corpses. Well, I checked the, the thing that they kicked on the way out. The thing uh, bound in canvas it looked like a body. Yes. I check it out. I uh, like float over to it and see if I can take a peek as to who's underneath. And if I need to, I'll use my sword to cut the canvas. No, it, it's more like a just like a canvas blanket that's been laid wow. over top of them. Uh, Pull it off. You recognize it as another uh, another one of the shrouded Israel. But uh, uh, so they seem to be the... not breathing, eyes dilated, and uh, leaking onto the floor uh, from some strange wound in their uh, lower abdomen. Is it kidney guy? <laughs> it, it is indeed kidney guy. Oh, finally, kidney I think guy. I found him. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. So these uh, shrouded ones and the beggars' court are enemies, clearly from what from what it looks like. Uh, yeah, because the beggars' court was the one that sent us in here, right? Or helped us get in no. here at least. Yeah, Chana works for the beggars. Yeah, yeah, the beggar king. Okay. Um, get a rummage through their pockets just to see if they have anything mildly valuable. All right, give me a stamina roll. That, that's a <laughs> weird roll for a rummage. <laughs> uh, that's uh, <clears throat> a three total. <laughs> so you start rummaging through these bodies, and you do find a total between all seven, a total of ten copper. Uh, but while you're doing it, you just cannot stand the stench. Because it seems that these bodies have been here for a couple of days, and now that you're a little bit closer, you realize it, and you just vomit all over the place. Yum. I'm having a great Yee. time down here. <laughs> <clears throat> but now that you have gotten closer and you know can see the bodies distinctly, uh, there's a, a number of different species. There's a, a Talath, a Bawaik, and a couple that you're not familiar with. <clears throat> uh, does anybody... Is there anybody alive in here? Like, no. Under, okay, everybody's dead. Got it. You see, it, as you're looking at them, it seems like a lot of them died from either being stabbed in the back or having their throat slit. They've all been assassinated. Hmm. Bianca would uh, immediately recognize this as like the work of a master assassin. Mm. Efficient. How many, uh, how many doors do we have in this room uh, other than the ones that the guards fled through? There are two exits, the ones that they fled through, and one more. Okay. Hmm. 
The enemy has likely been alerted. Perhaps the other entryway? He points to the door. Did you say there was another door that nobody went through yet? Or it's just yes. the one door? Oh, there was. Okay. Kind of take a quick peek in there. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a simple hallway. Yeah. Uh, it is unlit. Damn hallways. But it, it does look empty. <clears throat> kind of throw up a hand motion to everyone that, that there's no one down there. I have uh, languages zero. Uh, did I understand anything of what they were saying with concerns to like a dungeon or anything like that? Prisoners. Uh, you would understand low. Okay. Uh, Darish. It's like common. So you would have caught some of the. Uh, all of you would have caught some part. Omesh would have caught the most. You seem to have understood what they said, wizard. Where did they mention anything about our um, the people we're looking for? Omesh's face twists when you say wizard. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, uh, my mistake. You are a sorcerer, yes? Necromancer, perhaps? Hmm. Can it no, but face I did understand that, that they... <laughs> They did speak of a dungeon. Ah. And they did speak of slaves being used to transport things from here to other places. Perhaps that is where we need to search. What was that loud, blaring voice that we heard? What was that all about? I could not understand. It was in a dialect dialect unbeknownst to you. It sounded authoritative. Perhaps following the guards would show us the way to our quarry, perhaps? I think following the guards would lead us to the leader. And also a possibility. Well, you could, f- could follow the guards or go down the unlit hallway. Perhaps <clears throat> choose the doorway that frightens you the most. <laughs> Wait, you said you choose the door that frightens me the most? Yeah. Is that what you said? I'm not frightened. Oh, then perhaps we should go through this doorway. He points to the one that the guards went through. It's not practical. Ah. Then the other I, doorway. Yeah. I haven't lived this. I haven't lived this long by actively seeking out the threat. Just doing my job. Yeah, well, then you're not you're living. A very different type of mortal. Please proceed. Uh, I go down the other hallway. <laughs> okay. You make it about halfway down. Doesn't seem to be anybody coming or going. And then just on your left, as it is very unlit, you know, halfway down, you do notice a guard that is asleep. That is sitting in front of a door. 
Ramiel just, you know, puts away his sword for the moment. He just leans on it and await, uh, expectantly awaits for <laughs> these people to carry out what they they do best. Um. Where are you? And as you're standing here staring at this sleeping guard. Uh, I found it. Uh, yeah, can I uh, look around and see if I notice anything else or try to? Well, observation. Observation. Uh, uh, just the just observation. Observation plus uh, awareness. Uh, that is a, uh, 15. Okay. So you can tell that this guard is, you know, very much asleep. Uh, you can tell that they are female. She is kind of muttering in her sleep as it, you know, you quietly approach her. Doesn't move. As you're getting a... Looking around, trying to get a better look of the hallway. You realize that you passed a door that was half open, but it was so dark, you just didn't see it. Making your way up. There is a very, very low light and probably looks like a candle that's just about to go out. In the room that we just passed? <clears throat> oh, you, you passed the door right. as you were moving down the hallway. Okay. And because of your role, you hear sounds coming from further down the hallway. You don't see anything, but it, see, it sounds like people training. You hear weapons clanging. You hear uh, orders being directed, you know, thrust, parry, things like that. Uh, Bianca communicates that, um, that to, quietly, to... The other three. And uh says uh okay. So like we we, we pa I, I noticed that we passed an open door when but we couldn't see it until we uh Bianca is going to double back. Mm hmm And uh Go uh, looking, uh, just quietly peek in that room. It's a kitchen. It's a kitchen. There's nobody inside. You see a small brazier table, pots, pans. Right. Uh, sh uh, she'll go back and. Uh, will uh, put uh, her hand on the dude's the wings shoulder and say uh, I'll let you handle uh, the sleeping guard. Hmm. How should I handle them? Quietly. will float down, uh, <laughs> assuming he gets her, her gist. He, he just kind of floats down and very calmly, very quietly places his large hand over 
uh, the mouth and with the other hand slices the the throat of the uh, the slumbering guard. Damn, it's cold. Yeah, uh, no attack needed for that. <laughs> and he you just have... watches, you know. <clears throat> so, well, yeah, they're dead now. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to look uh, in that door. The, like, like this the store that she's guarding. Does it have like slats in it? Yes, it does. Do you, uh, I'm going to look inside it. So as you look in this lengthy looking chamber, you see pens, cages, many of them with neck manacles bolted into the heavy stone. But without going in, that's about all you can see. Looking at the body that they just uh, deaded, it, mm -hmm. is there a key, key ring or anything on them? There is. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, take... Jing jingle jangle that and start Go unlocking in. some slaves. <clears throat> Captives, I guess. Uh, is anyone in here? At first, you don't see anyone. And despite the high ceiling, it seems very cold in here. Get the stench of urine and feces all around you. Are you going to go inside, or are you just saying this through the slat? This is a very oh, no. large room. Oh, no. oh I got like open that room like, and go in. Yeah. No, that's what like, I went in with. Uh, I'm also going to bring the body with me. Um, because uh, a rotting corpse is masked by the smell of feces and urine at least for a while so it looks like i'm sorry go like ahead smell wise mm -hmm. i was just making a joke i was like uh, i see you're handling the body now good this is uh, teamwork <laughs> is, is anyone in here there spawn? are people in here you see a total of four. Hmm. S still not pitch black, but very dark. Obviously, they don't give light to just anybody. Uh, there is a bit of dim light coming from the farthest cage. And just from that dim light, you can make out four individuals. One uh, kind of frog-looking uh, creature. Anyone who is a Lahin native would recognize this as an word. A very high caste uh, species known for their void navigation. Uh, you see an elderly woman, human, and you see two others. I will let our new players describe their characters. Gasp. Oh, wow. Would you like to go first, Calliope? Oh, go right ahead. You can go first. Okay. So... Sitting, I guess, in one of the corners of the cage, you see a fairly well-built, uh, bronze-skinned individual with small, like small vestigial horns and black hair. Um, if I, Arbiter, do I still have my gear or clothing at least? You would have uh, your bare minimum clothing. You would not have any of your armor or your weapons. Okay, so. Surprisingly well dressed uh, individual as well. He just kind of looks at, back at you as you look in the cage. Like it's about time someone arrived, and just kind of looks waiting. Who are you? 
Me? I am Rajdan. And who may I ask are you? Bianca. Would you do us the honor of opening this cage and letting us out? Oh, immediately open. If he's talking, yeah. not even, just already open. <laughs> this is a cat. I don't know. I have a name. I don't know his name. Mm -hmm. It smells of fine grass, I think he said. His you, name was. you don't know the name of someone you're traveling with? Haven't known long. It was a job. Greetings mm. from the beggar's court. Greetings. I what is your name? I've been looking for you. He points to the cat person. Ramiola uh, looks, leans in close to the, to sniffs. And he's like, "Oh, I believe this is the customary moment when you identify yourselves uh, to each other." <clears throat> holds out his hand, sniffs the fine grass. I take the offered hand. Reshen, lovely to make your acquaintance. Excellent. <clears throat> Anybody else alive in here? I motion back to the other three. I'll let them introduce themselves as I kind of step out of the cage if I'm able to. If they don't block your way, then. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is open. All right. Um, and uh, with my character, uh, it's a very antsy, very uh, slender looking human being with, uh, I guess, mostly human. Uh, like pinkish colored like not human colored skin but like almost like a translucent quartz colored skin they have these like little almost nubs where one would assume horns would eventually be but just never ended up sprouting through and little eyeballs that have also have never opened on their face uh the type of being that my character is i cannot pronounce the name of it but i believe it's supposed to be something like a, a jail jail shell does that sound any familiar? Yeah. Anyone? Thank you. Well, Jake, yeah. Yes, thank you. That is exactly what they are. And um, so uh, she just is like, for good Lord, can we save the pleasantries for later? Move, 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 move. And just starts like shooing like a chicken to get past and beyond. And it's like, <laughs> is, this the, is this the dungeon? Oh. <laughs> I hope it is because of the good Lord that we are here. <laughs> I don't know what good Lord. He he's talking about is this the dungeon well it sure ain't the sex party uh thank you for showing up uh i don't know how long we've been down here for Depends on your uh, <laughs> i make myself busy looking for my gear yeah uh good lord it took you long enough um i am Clyde. thank you since we are in the you know realm of introducing each other in the middle of this horrific situation. Thank you so much for showing up. Uh, where are my things? You wouldn't know, would you? That's fine. We didn't know you were here. We will so figure now. this out together. This is fine. Uh, either Calliope or Regden roll observation. All right, so if I'm doing this right, it's going to be a d12 plus your awareness. Yep. And then plus observation if you have the skill. I just bought it at rank zero, so it's not going to be any bonus. Okay. But then you, but you also don't get the negative. I have an 11. So it's, okay. could you repeat that again just for a second? Observation plus awareness plus four, did you say? Plus your d12, whatever you rolled. Okay. So that's nine. Okay, so uh, things have been hazy over the past couple days uh, as you were thrown into these cages, severely beaten. How you came, or the reason why the Shrouded Isrit might have taken you captive will be completely up to you. We can talk about that later. 
and weave it into the story. Uh, but here you are. And uh, with your guys' roles, you are able to remember in those moments of lucidity uh, that there is a kind of like caged, locked uh, cabinet in the far rear of the room that they kept all of the equipment that they had taken from the cabinets. And it's in the same room, correct? Correct. Okay, um, could I, uh, ooh, first time player, uh, at least in the sense, the realm of D12s, um, could Calliope look around the room for something to smash open that lock with? Sure. Um, uh, is that a search roll or how would you like me to do it? Yes, you can roll observation again. Okay. Or, or <laughs> investigate if you have. Who unlocked the, it was Sniffs the Grass that unlocked the cage, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sniffs the grass. May I see that key for a moment? Hands it over. And I head over to the cabinet to see if that key works. Not that key, but there are a couple of keys on that ring. I, I will try them then. Do I get any um, bonuses for rolling a perfect 12 on my dice? Yes, roll it again. Okay. Okay, and that one was a three. So what's the total? So so I add the additional roll to my already roll? Yep. Would be a 19. Okay. So you are able to find a, a shit bucket. This is one of the nicer ones. Is it, it at is, least empty? It is not, but it is made of very heavy stone, and you could probably smash this lock open with it. Okay, so um, Calliope, I suppose being Calliope, is just going to grab the shift bucket, walk as far away as she can from people, unload it, <laughs> and then go back and just ka right against the uh, lock a couple of times. So as uh, Regden is going through the uh, four or five keys that are on the, the rung, Calliope comes over and smashes the shit out of this lock as uh, bits of poo. Oh, gross. Uh, <laughs> I just, I need a shower in real life after doing this. But the lock Omesh, is open. <laughs> Omesh nice. looks on in disgust and horror at just the lack of grace <laughs> and the shit flying everywhere <laughs> as the stone uh, bucket's being swung. And she just looks, she just, look, I'm sorry, could, uh, could you remind me of Omesh's pronouns? Uh, he, him. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, Clypey just looks at, at Omesh and just says, listen, I have been down here for God knows how long. I probably don't smell any better than that fucking shitter to begin with. We're all fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. And just starts Doesn't... rummaging in the cabinet. If you had met, told me that there was a cabinet of your weapons, I could have. And like Bianca holds up, up her uh, lock picking set, gotten this in. Well, you you just hold up the key ring. Lady gets shit done. <clears throat> and then I'll go about gathering my gear if it's in there. Oh, it is. All of, all of your gear that you purchased or started with is now yours. So yes. all of your armor, weapons, trinkets. Armor and belt on my weapons. Omesh, as you look around... <coughs> Uh, you still see the word uh, that seems to have a nicer cell than everyone else as he has a table. The table is an upgrade. <laughs> yes, he has a table and, and a <clears throat> candle. Uh, a candle. But other than that, it looks fairly the same. As you look on to see them uh and as the light flickers you get a glint of another face <clears throat> from inside one of the other cages you see a woman fairly old woman it's difficult to distinguish but as you move forward she gets up and starts moving closer to the bars. 
And then immediately you hear the faint shriek as this old woman throws herself at the cage side. And she reaches her grubby, emaciated arms towards you between the bars. Her hair is just a total mess, face covered with soot and grime. But Omish, in the dim light, you recognize the countenance of your mother. Um... Yeah. Where is the key? Is the key in line of sight? The key to this door. <laughs> oh. Who has the key? Um, I believe I'm taking the key. I believe this one so has I, the key. I'll toss the keys to Omesh if I see him. But also, looking. but also there is a bucket of shit over there, which is quite good at <laughs> destroying the locks. Really with, obsessed with the bucket of shit. With a twenty-six for mysticism, Omesh yanks the key from across the room with magic powers, and takes the key and uses it to unlock the door, and throws it open. All right. So you open it, and she's just so, so frail. You haven't seen her in a long time. But she looks very bad. And it looks like she's been here for some time. She tries to make words, but you can tell that she's so excited and weak at the same time that nothing's coming out and she just as the door opens after you unlock it she just kind of falls to the ground but yet still reaching up to you a rare sight omesh exerts physical effort to try and keep her on her feet it's oh it's okay She goes, oh, my boy. Uh, I never thought I would see you again. It's been too long. Omesh helps walk her across the, like, across the room, completely just ignoring the fact that his clothes are now covered in shit. <laughs> So it... <laughs> and makes a beeline for the exit of the dungeon, just leaving the party behind, trying to get her out of this situation. You're just gonna run like all the way out, like out of yep. the building proper. Out of the building proper, get her out of here. The previous mission thrown out the window for Omesh. This he has not seen her in at least eight years. So, priorities. Human displays of affection are always puzzling to me. Hmm. So Omesh disappears <laughs> right, out yeah. the way that you guys came in uh, without a word. Sometimes when you lose someone and you find them again, it can be overwhelming I'm hmm. interesting he takes out the clay tablet and makes note of it with the read now you are able to uh, it's going to take you a little bit of time how far and where do you want to drop her off at he would try to get to the home of the person who works for the beggar king who helped us earlier okay and he is going Chana, to right? leave her. Correct. He is going to leave his mother the 30 din that he was paid just earlier that day. <laughs> saying, like, buy yourself some food, water, clothes, stay safe, I'll be back. Do like, you ask her anything before you leave? How did you even get there? Oh, I was... I was living on the streets and was taken by the Shrouded Israel several months ago. They tried to sell me. 
but nobody wants to buy an old weak woman. So they kept me and used me as a servant. Omesh clenches his fists, hearing about what happened. Just nods, says that he'll be back, turns around and without another word, walks back the whole distance to try and get back to the party. However many hours it would take by this point, since it's like an underground tunnel system and everything. Yeah. So Omesh is gone, and the five of you are still standing in this uh, dungeon. Well, it seems that one of our own has abandoned us. So I won't miss him. Were you sent here to rescue me? Or are you here I for another reason? Uh, who are you to be rescued? Again, my name is Rajdan. <laughs> that means nothing to me. We were sent, we were here to rescue or look into the disappearance of one called You don't come to me. Line <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we com- didn't have a name, I don't think. Yeah, it was it was Itzel's uh, um, compatriots. It's, it's, it's the name Itzel. Did anybody utter the name Itzel? Means nothing to me. Then mm. you aren't here. Who we're looking for? Okay then. Yeah. Um. Someone, Itzel's companions went got taken, and we were asked to look into it. I turn to the other three individuals that were in the cage with me. Are you companions of Itzel? Are the other two uh, alive? Uh, um... So Calliope is not a friend of Itzel. Right, obviously. But the other two, do they react to that name or say anything? So the one... Well, there is yet, yet another. Once you say the name, it's still. Mm-hmm. You hear a. Uh, that one knows it's. A... I turn towards the noise. You see a uh, a cage that is open. Open it up. I look. Inside you see the we'll say the remnants of a man unmoving and even though his cage is open he's made no attempt to escape I believe this is who you're looking for did you know it's all it's all oh okay I do not detect good or bad in his response. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's a, is he is he just does it look does he look like he's hungry, thirsty, like if if I got a water skin I'd I'd, I'd let him take it and start drinking. It, it looks like he has not eaten or drinking in a many days. Uh Bianca <laughs> will give him a half eaten half slightly going I mean it's one of the better apples you know it's charitable half eaten um it's only going off a little bit like a spider monkey he grabs it (laughs) Almost feral like, <laughs> and he retreats this... to the corner of his cage and just devours it, flesh, core, and all. <laughs> this human needs sustenance and water, yeah. perhaps as well. Come, and he grabs him by the foot and starts dragging him out of the. Uh, oh, cell. Right, right, right. He starts clawing at your hand and starts raving in an unintelligible gibberish. Oh. Is, that... is this combat or is this foreplay? <laughs> no. 
Right. No, that is, is there... the. What the? What is wrong with you? That is a desperate man trying to defend himself from what he perceives as an attacker. Oh, he he's like, ah, I understand now. And he pats him on the head. He's like, I am not here to hurt you, little man. As you pat him on the head, his head starts to bleed. Ooh. Oh, I think this one may be diseased as well. You should probably reside with me since I am immune to such things. What is your name? <laughs> okay. His name is Hut. Hut? Or Hot? Hot. We, we shall call Do you it? Hot until you can speak again. Any one of you have any sort of medical training? Mm, no. All my training is to avoid being heard. <laughs> Finally, you hear a voice from the end of the cages where this Ord prisoner had been sitting. And in a, you know, froggish, froggish voice. You're, uh, don't bother with that one. He's a bit insane. Mm, you don't say. Um, might I suggest that we get these prisoners out before explore, exploring this dungeon a bit more? Hmm. Yes, well, if you would that would be wise. Like some additional an additional sword arm, I would be happy to come along. Very well, you can have that half a share. <clears throat> Don't know what that means. Just sounded very official. <laughs> <clears throat> it did at that. Are you? Oh, you are offering him the wizard's share. Yes, he's not here, so <laughs> did not complete the quest. <clears throat> I am familiar with this tradition. Very good. Mm -mm. Are you Wait, going how much to... were they paid? <laughs> I'm not sure what you are saying, but are you saying that you will take me out of here? This is our rescue. Yeah. Oh. To sanctuary. To are you from the delegation? The dele... It's... What are you babbling? You're stuck in a cage. Why don't you get out? We yeah. are here on behalf of the Beggar King and his court. Is be, uh, is it is that the Ord who's talking? Yes. Uh, Bianca will take the key, unlock the door to the Ord. Uh, what's your name? My name is Mali. Mali. One out of here. Let's go. We're all I do. Here. Uh, would it be more easier for you to leave if you were carried or if you just moved by yourself? You can see that he is very squat, but does have the capability of walking. All right, let's go. Are you offering <laughs> or just asking? Because <laughs> let's leave. This place is stinky and wet. I mean... It's dry. Calliope, you're coming too? No, I figured I would stay here, maybe put up some curtains. Of course I'm coming! Oh, I mean, it could I be mean, a little snappy. It's got a table. <laughs> like, you upscale. You know, I mean, you know, Calliope, some of us, this would be an upgrade how we grew up. So, perspective. I mean, just takes it literally and shrugs. It's like, okay, she likes to hear. <laughs> Keeps floating out of the room with the uh, hungry man. Are we taking this one? And I point to the, the gibbering one in the cell. Ah, yes. He seems to be our closest lead to our quarry. So we should probably take him, even though he smells and can't talk. I'm sure it'll be fine. We all smell at this point, just even a tiny bit. And speak for yourself. Kind of licks his fur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tastes like dungeon. Well, let us make haste. Right. Are you we'll going go. to go back the exact way you came in? Uh, yes. Considering we cleared that way, I think that's probably the best way to go. Yeah. You are met with no resistance. Damn straight. <laughs> 
Uh, however, when you go back through the storage room, it seems as if someone has moved the bodies. Like they're all gone or they're just stacked in a different position? <laughs> yeah, they're all standing. No. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> they're over the gate, the door like, hi. No, the only one that remains is uh, the guy that was liberated. Liberated. Huh. Uh, that's weird. All the other bodies are gone. Cool. But once you meet, or once you make it to the outer room that had these stairs going into the large cavern, you meet up with Omesh. Okay. And it's coming back in. Oh, the hey, wizard has returned. We gave your share to uh, this one. Who did? He is a gibbering madman, but he is hungry, and we are taking him back. Yeah. You gave my share yes. to who? Well, you left. To me. So... I didn't even ask for it. They just gave it to me. Yes, Regiton's no. a very nice person. He seems to deserve a share, so he gets your share. No, that share belongs to me. Well, since it's been alone. given to him, you can argue it out later once we get back to the tent. <clears throat> I was the old woman. The old woman will be fine. When we come back to the surface, is it just business as usual? People hanging out, being groovy, or? Well, you're not back to the surface yet. Aw, oh, boo. There were six or seven of these people that we were sent to get, and this is the only one that's confirmed to have any sort of uh, notion as to who this woman was. Um, then we have a whole lot more of them. Some uh, frog guy doesn't seem to didn't seem to indicate that he knew her as well. Like, he's well, considering you didn't really ask him anything, with the exception of did he want out of here, and he said yes. Uh, oh, I'd probably bring that up on the way out. Like, so you, small green one, um, do you know that woman that we referred to earlier? The voice he, traveler. I go on to explain that he doesn't recognize the name, but he will say that. Uh, Not long ago, about three humans were brought into the cage next to his, and they were dressed in very, you know, the, almost the finest of clothing that even he could find. Hmm. They all had visible jewelry that they were wearing. But of course, they were stripped of their valuables and harshly questioned. But it seemed like they didn't have the ability to speak or were just unwilling to speak as everything they said just came out as nonsense. Gibberish, perhaps? And he looks over to uh, Omesh. What? He is saying Gibberish. that the people that were brought into the cells next to him did not speak any known languages, and what they were saying appeared as gibberish. Perhaps that is what became of them, of those that we found below. Perhaps. And Omesh is still stuck on the idea that he, that Ramiel thought gibberish was an actual language for half a second. <laughs> just kind of stuck on that. Like, <laughs> perhaps that's what happened to them, yes. Uh, <sighs> Omesh, roll intellect. Straight intellect. Mm. Difficulty four. Oh yeah, that's a that is a twelve. Okay, so at the mention of a gibberish language in your mind's mind, you would recollect that the first time that you met Itzel and the altercation that she had, she was speaking a strange language that even you didn't recognize. You wouldn't call it gibberish, but it was something that you didn't you didn't recognize. Question to the arbiter. 
Yes. What I know of other angels, perhaps, uh, that I might be able to get into contact with who are perhaps, you know, uh, experts in different tongues, speak in tongues, so to speak. You would. Yeah, you would be able to, to reach out once you got if back I to may. the surface. Once we return, perhaps I can uh, ask one of my associates who may be able to assist in discerning this strange language. And perhaps that way we may be able to find the others. Would this be a minimal? Is sufficient. Molly continues to explain that uh, because the shrouded Israel were getting angry that they couldn't get any information out of these humans. They called on the gang Domina. And she used her powers to glean information directly from their minds. Uh, Mind reader. Ramiel, at the name of Domina, you know who this is. It is a towering, golden-skinned being with three faces, white eyes, and six arms. You said Ganema? Donima, or Domina, like dominate. <sighs> oh, okay. Three-headed or three-faced? Three-faced. Oh, right up my alley. Mines. Okay. Molly says that he doesn't. He doesn't know what she gleaned from their minds, uh, but it is probably why this one. And he points to the you know human that's going all wacko. Is the way he is. Ah, Domina. I recognize this name. I have not heard it in, oh, a very long time. The last thing that he tells you is a couple of days ago when he was waking up, several, intr several, ah, several intruders entered the cage chamber and they very intently headed for the cage holding the three uh, humans. They quickly broke the door and pulled out two of them. But this one was just so deranged, they just left him. I was pretty pissed off that they didn't talk to me. I am important. They should have talked to me. Oh, well. Are the others able to get in on this uh, this information, or am I the only one who's uh, uh, able to? Yeah, he, clean they will give it freely. It's kind of like an open okay. conversation as you guys are walking out. Interesting. So I, I tell them like uh, what I know about this Domina and how she's able to break people's minds and just kind of look at. Uh, uh, hungry man, as an example. This appears to be what our opposition looks like. Hmm. I can marry the skill. If I can find a picture, I will. Uh... Yes, I will make sure that I give you that picture so that you know. Ooh, nice. Yes. Or for those who want to look in the core rule book, it is 354. Hmm. It's not that specific one, but it is of that race. Interesting. She looks like she could step. 
Ça, ça regarde. Ouais. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Uh, Ramya will propose that we bring the uh, the captives that we have back to where uh, Omesh brought his mother to, uh, just to kind of get them situated, and that can perhaps buy us some time to for me to go find some associates uh, to get more information about where the other captives might be, etc. What's the best way to reach there, and so on. In the event that uh, hungry man here uh, got more. Uh, Glean more information than the other captives, perhaps. You know, maybe knows a, where we can, where exactly we can go to to find the others, and retrieve them. Okay. So you guys will make your way back to Chana's uh, secret hideout. We have returned. And we will return after we take a break because it's halfway already. Doesn't make sense. I know. Go so fast. <laughs>
And we are back with our party emerging from the ruined temple that they had entered to get to this shrouded Isrit stronghold. They have new friends in tow and a couple uh, non-combatants. It is night now in the Eternal City. And again, you find yourself in the district of Kima. You begin to wake your way back to Chana's safe house. Going through the side alleys, back alleys, side alleys, zigzag alleys. Ramael and sniffs because of what you had seen earlier in the day when you were on the rooftops and high above the sky mm -hmm. you're starting to sense a movement moving along those same rooftops however with the darkness it is very difficult to see is it like somebody's yeah. following us or somebody observing us or Yes. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Ah, perhaps we should have been more cautious in our egress. That's what I was saying. <laughs> ah, but initially you feared going deeper into the fortress. <clears throat> no matter. Fear is a common symptom of you mortals. Uh, shall we engage them now with violence, or shall we wait for them to inevitably engage us with violence? Um, uh, is it possible to set an ambush, or would it be best to just leave? Hmm. We can perhaps do both, yes? Roll streetwise. No oh, shit. <clears throat> <laughs> rogues i have no streetwise <laughs> <laughs> then, then you're rolling it at a minus three it's whatever be, uh, stupid you can use awareness got a got intellect all or presence uh presence up the yin yang so i'll use that oh okay that's better uh pre you said awareness Boom, or 12 presence whatever uh oh well yeah it doesn't matter yeah he he got much higher than i did did yep. you roll a 12 or did you just i rolled get a 12. 12 yeah i just rolled it in astral uh 12 and then a two plus another two so 16. and you don't have streetwise i do not have streetwise so minus three that's 13 total. 13. uh based on what you remember uh from the way that they were moving around the rooftops, you may be able to to set up some type of ambush if you wanted to. Hmm. Follow me, please. I lead them into uh, some place like uh, that appears to be like a dead end, uh, and I tell them to like disperse or find positions where they can, you know, potentially assault uh, these people from the rooftops. I'm assuming that these people on the rooftops are either observing or moving in for a kill, in which case they would I would, they would either have to shoot at us or move down towards us <coughs> and retrieve uh, their captive. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, whoever is going to take up a position, uh, give me... If you're going to like hide, give me stealth. If you want to try and get a good attack position, you can give me streetwise or survival. It's a 15 stealth. Hmm. I have a 13 on stealth. Uh, so a stealth would be just... Agility plus stealth, D12. Excellent. Could I, using Streetwise, find a good vantage point to 
sort of sling mysticism from? Yes. Give Slinging me a that way. mysticism. Slinging some mysticism. That's Slinging some mysticism. What did you say? 13? 13. Okay, yeah, you are able to find a, uh, a perch that is below the rooftops, uh, but high enough to give you a plus one on your uh, attacks. I like this a meat shield, so I'll just have all the captives with me, and they can sort of do what they will if they want to shoot at me or whatever. I will math them to death from a distance. I will stab them in their kidneys. Is Bianca going to hide? Yes. What did you roll? I rolled a 15. Okay, so you were able to find a shadowy nook that you can lie in wait. Calliope? Uh, yeah, I'm also going to duck down with a weapon and hide, and I rolled an 11. Oh, that's good. Okay. So a couple of minutes goes by. You're hiding. Ramiel is standing in the middle of this dead end. Waiting. <laughs> Pretends to be lost. You know, like, oh, I must have made a wrong turn. Wink. <laughs> Uh, okay. Then without notice, five shadowy figures jump down from the rooftops. And since they only see you, they immediately go for you. Only, Roll initiative. Only five. All right, only so five. this is D12 this is going to plus be... agility modifier? Correct. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Hold on. Read that to me again. It's agility modifier. It's... You already it's... rolled it. Oh, I yeah. did. Okay. Yep. Uh, I got a six, Dwayne. Total. Nine. I have an eleven. Three. I still got all the old characters in here. Uh, Sniffs. What did you roll? Six total. Six. Omesh, what did you roll? A three. Yeah, a three. Okay. Rajdin, what did you have? Dave, what did you get? An eleven. Eleven. And Kalapi. I rolled a one. You rolled a one? One. I rolled a one. You have no agility modifier? Oh, I'm sorry. So with my agility modifier, it's a four. Okay. There's no there's no critical failures or critical successes. Well, there are critical successes mm -hmm. in initiative, but no critical failures. Thank you. I wasn't sure if it counted or not with me having rolled a one. I didn't bother adding anything on to you told me to, so thank you. All right, let's see when these guys are going to go. Rajdin, what is your agility modifier? Uh, plus three. Plus three. All right. You get to go first, then. All right. Well, then I will pop up from my hidey hole <coughs> and take out my dagger and uh, one of the ones going after Ramiel. Oh, they are all surrounding him, all five of them. Okay. So I'll pick one of the five to slice into. Okay, they do not see you, so they are not going to be able to take a reaction against you. So go ahead and roll your attack. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the sword. 
11. And with the dagger, it is. Are you using two weapons? Yeah, I have ambidexterity and I took um, dual wielding. Okay. So I should be at a minus three for this first at the dagger attack. And so plus four is one seven with the dagger. Okay, so the sword hits, the dagger does not. Okay. Well, that is 10 plus strength modifier applies, right? Yes, to the damage. Uh, 12 points of damage to that fellow. Oh. Takes a grievous wound to the back and begins to bleed out. Uh, is still standing, but not going to be standing for very long. Okay. Uh, Bianca, it is your turn. Uh, this is like the surprise round. If you will. Uh, I'm going to go up uh, and grab another one. So that's towards the back that are, that are getting up on Ramael. And I'm just going to quickly slash his throat. Do you have the... Uh... Do you have backstab as a uh, specialty? Uh, I did not. I did not know that was a thing. Uh, I have a superior. I have a superior dagger. But you don't have the specialty of backstab. I did not. I did not know that was a, a thing I could take. No. Okay. So you're just gonna backstab him. <clears throat> so you get a plus three. Plus three. Uh, is that with my attack modifier as well? Mm -hmm. So if you roll that... an eleven, it counts as a twelve. Not for the number, but it counts as a critical hit. Uh, so I would add plus eight then. Oh, would you? I hold on. Let me look at your character. He's a plus three, and I have an attack mark of five. Uh, let's see. One, two. That is plus five. I already okay. put it on. Yeah, I already put it All in right. there. All right. Uh, that is a 14. That will hit. Then roll your damage. Remember, because you have a superior dagger, that is plus one damage. Excellent. The D4. Yeah, that's only four. Plenty of every other dice I could find, but the D4. Uh, five. Okay. Give him a stab to the back. 
Takes five damage. He is totally surprised, but is still standing. Sniffs. The cosine is 37 degrees. The sine is 75 degrees. The, uh, the congruence is non-Euclidean. Just rambling on. Um, what's the additions to the roll that I do for casting spells? Uh, I put all of yours in there. So you need yours. It's just the DC. I pre-calculated it for you. Oh, right. It's DC 12. DC 12. Um, and then I roll plus intelligence and... And your uh, mind blast, or did I roll the gnostic, or add the gnostic? Add gnostic. Okay, cool. Uh, I got twelve, so that'll hit it. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, he does not get to save against this. Mm, good. What What was the damage on that? Uh. I gotta open up your sheet. I got these bars over the very bottom. I can't see what it says. I don't know if that's it. Yours was <clears throat> automatically takes three damage and loses. So roll a d4. Four. He just lost four sanity. As the numbers in his mind bash and confuse him. He's just thinking about triangles that aren't triangles. Yeah. Trying to figure out why he's thinking of triangles. <laughs> uh, Calliope. <clears throat> You were muted. Yes, I am. Hello, I'm here now. Um, so I know you don't have my sheet, so you can't see any of my things, but I assure you, I have a, um, a, a, bow and, a composite bow. Mm -hmm. And I took, was it precise shot or it was, yeah, precise shot, <coughs> I think. And I believe that's what it was. It's like a three, so on. Oh, a specialty? Yes. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So I'm going to. Could you walk me through how that would work with rolling for it with a specialty? Do you know how that works? Yes, I do. Let me look up the specialty, the actual specialty. I don't know what it does off the top of my head. Also, pull that up. I was actually in the process of trying to. Precise shots gives you. So you have no penalty for making a called shot. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Thank you. So for a called shot, it usually has a minus three attack mm -hmm. and you can hit a specific area. So like if I want to shoot him in the eye, mm -hmm. it would be, you would be at a minus three, but you ignore that minus three. Oh, good. And like minds think alike, because I definitely, the one that is closest to uh, Ramiel are the one that Bianca hasn't hit yet. Okay, there are two uh, that have not been hit. Yeah, um, the one, I guess, the one closest to that, is, I'm going to, like, shoot him in the eye. Well, his back is to you, but you but could definitely shoot him in the head. Yeah, let's aim for the back of the skull. Ooh, that's 11 on the dice, so... Would be plus your agility, plus any... Uh, I would hope that you took some skills in bows i certainly did okay so add whatever skills you have in bows and your agility your agility modifier so that's a 17. that, that will definitely hit mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and roll damage that's a six and that's only a single d6 correct plus your strength plus my strength okay and my strength is Four. <coughs> so that is an eight. All right. 
He has no armor on his head. Therefore, he goes down. An arrow sticking out of the back of his head. Ramael, as you turn and you hear the thud of the arrow hitting the skull. This, uh, now that you get a quick glance at the uh, actual person, it is a uh, monkey looking individual. Blue fur. And he slumps down in front of you. The arrow is still sticking out of the back of his head. They use him Ramile for more shoes later. Beams with pride. Mm-hmm. Oh, mesh. How? All right. So, say I wanted to target three of them with something. Yes. How far away is the farthest individual? Or how far away would the third closest individual be? Complex. <laughs> the third closest individual. Uh, this is a. Think of it as a dead end. The area is no more than 20 meters. So you could probably hit them all. I said they are surrounding Ramayo. So they're with they're within five meters of each other. Alrighty. That's those are the golden words I need to hear. Oh yeah. It's all coming together. Oh yeah. I would like to use a mystic phenomenon to lower their staminas by three. What would the highest stamina among them be? I need it for the roll. The highest stamina among them is two. <laughs> two. Okay. All right. So I need to beat a 12 to do this. I would like to use a uh, a vote for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was it a one? It it was a nine. Okay. That is a one. Hmm. I will accept that one. I accept oh, my feet. God, I love it. <laughs> so, for those who have not played, magic is very powerful in this game. <clears throat> But I can also screw you over. Oh boy. Uh, I love it. Great. So your target was uh, 12? My target number was 12. I rolled a 7 total. Roll a 7. It's only 4. That's not that bad. Where's my thingy? It's not that uh, bad. What? You stay with a smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Can't find my bad chart. The calamities chart. Check the check the beginning of the book. There's an entire index of all the charts. <laughs> There's that many of them. It's page 168 of the core rule book. Oh, I thought I had Wonder it in the core rule book. Get it on Drive Through RPG today. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll a d6. Yay. That's not a d6. Yeah, that's a five. So Omesh waves his hands and concentrates and tries to cast this phenomena in... I guessing it was an area of effect. As he strains, nothing really seems to happen, but then a strange, like, sulfurous stench begins to fill the entire area. What was your area of effect on that? Uh, it was targeting three people. So... That is equivalent to... That is equivalent to two meters. 
one meter. That is one meter of area. Got it. So I need Ramael, the crazy guy, the Ord, and one of the bad guys to make stamina rolls. Okay, I'm not terrible at that. As this stench begins to nauseate. Uh, more stench. Oh, goody. Uh, let's see. That's three. All right. Uh, I got a seven total. You are okay. Oh. Uh, these assassins, the assassin is also okay. The Ord is all right. However, the crazy man begins retching as his eyes begin to water. He begins to vomit. He is at a negative one for the next two minutes. He looks at the wretching guy's like, oh, was it something you ate? <laughs> and he looks to uh he looks to the Bianca like that rotten apple of yours. Like <laughs> But now it is actual combat time, so Rajdin, it is your turn. Alrighty. Uh this guy, guy that I attacked is still up, so I will attack another one. But f- try to finish off the wounded guy with my dagger. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to, yeah, I guess if they're not facing me, if they're still focused around me, I'll just kind of try and slash them in the leg. If that makes sense. Uh, so, so 10. And we'll hit. Sword. All right. And the dagger this time is a nine. Nine will hit. All right. So for the sword. We're looking at five damage. And did you want that one to go towards another injured one or one of the uninjured? Uh, another injured one is fine. You said five? Yes. Okay. And then five damage with the dagger to the guy I wounded last turn. Your dagger finds hold ah. under his rib. And uh, you cut sideways as you enter his body and uh his innards begin to fall out and he is down but now all of these assassins get to go yes nice. so one of them will attack ramael is it possible nice. for me to parry or is um so that's a reaction yes. yeah yes you can use your reaction to parry cool i'll do that uh, he rolled a four. <coughs> oh, i guess i think i'm okay <laughs> let me uh so he swings wide. Seeing that his friend, his brother, in fact, has an arrow sticking out of the back of his head. This other blue furred creature will turn and move to engage on Calliope. And he rolled a seven. What is your uh your dv your defense we on the second page left hand side this is the one that i wasn't sure that i did right because i have a nine that's probably right okay it, well. it floats anywhere between seven and ten. Okay. Depending oh. on your agility. Cool. So then mine's probably wrong. What size are you? Uh, right, I mean, I guess medium size. Yep. Okay. Uh, what's your agility? Uh, I have a plus three modifier. So yours is probably nine. Okay. 
they're nine or nine or ten. Okay. Unless you have a shield, and then it's yeah, I do not. But then there are other talents that allow you to add, like tough skin. No, not tough skin. ramiel has got a couple because his is pretty high. Uh, so base defense value seven, seven, and then defense mod agility modifier. So I have a ten. Okay. okay. Good to know. I didn't see that part in the book. Excellent. Okay. Anyways, he does not hit you. That was too low. Uh, the other human. Seeing that uh, this mystic has tried some nonsense. Will pull out his bow and aim. That's all he can do for. Just arm himself. <laughs> well, he had a sword, but. Oh, he switched. O Got o it. Omesh is is up a little bit, so. <clears throat> uh, the last one. Will attack at Bianca, who has. Rended actually no at Regden, who has rended many of many of people. Okay. Uh, That's that, fair. That is a nine. That will miss. That will miss. Bunch of missing. Now it is Ramael's turn. As uh, the one, what the one person who did a try a try to attack me and failed. What were they using? A blade as well. Yes. He chides him on his form, He's like you're telegraphing and your footwork is all wrong. Here, let me show you. And he proceeds to just kind of float around on his wings, and then he kind of like comes in and tries to like just run him through with the with the blade. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. He will do what is called a. Oh. Hmm. We'll do a lunge so he can actually hit him from a distance and kind of leap back. Uh, I got a plus one to the attack modifier. And the opponent also gets a plus one. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, to the to defense? <laughs> oh, no, on his next attack. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I can probably take it. Uh, let's see. Agility. Blades. Go. Shabalisha. I got a 10 plus 1, 11. That will hit. Yay. All right. Roll damage. I get 4 plus uh, D12 plus 1. That is a 10. So that is uh, 15. You cleave this man in twain. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> he just watches his body fall into pieces. Ah. As this, yes, as this sword comes cleaving down. Though not a great sword, uh, you have used a great sword in the past. And uh, using that extra might that you have from all of your training, are able to just literally slice him straight down the middle. As blood and guts fall onto the city streets. Would you say that he was sliced in twain? Yes. Nice. Bianca. Uh, is the guy that I attacked still alive? Yes. All right. Well, I'm just going to. One of them. Uh, I'm gonna stab the one that's left. Okay. Agility plus. Uh... <clears throat> Uh, 15. 
Right, we'll hit. Not as... Another five. That is enough to take him down as well. Do you find purchase in some of his layers of not quite armor, more like hardened cloth? Find a vital organ. With his last gaping breath, his eyes stay open. But nevertheless, he reaches the void by your hand. Sniffs. Uh, you said there was a guy that was trying to knock an arrow after dropping his sword. Yes. Just want to feed into like the. <laughs> just trying <laughs> to give him all kinds of thoughts about where that arrow could go. Just the math behind it, and like, um, gonna multiply by the Coriolis effect. Yeah. Uh, just try to fry his brain. Um, that's a uh, fourteen for math magic. That, that will work. Cool. I doubt he can withstand this. I'm going to try anyways. Possible. No. no. He's got a willpower of minus two. Suck it. Uh, so that's what? Uh, three psychic and another. Oh, only a let me roll. Uh, three. Three sanity. So. I now need you. Me? Yes. No. Roll me a d12. This ten. Oh. So the numbers go through his mind, mm -hmm. and it is indeed a mm -hmm. black void science math meme as mm. the numbers are battering his brain so much that he himself, to understand all that is going on in his mind, manifests three distinct identities and immediately becomes schizophrenic. Oh, gosh. Okay. Cover your math, kids. He starts, yes, under learn math <laughs> or, or becomes schizophrenic. Which is funny because I hate math, so. <laughs> <laughs> he starts talking to himself and arguing with himself, but he se it seems like one of his identities does know math and oh. is arguing with the other two about the correct way to fire this arrow so and he will lose his next up. turn. <laughs> That's poor bastard. Cool. I like it. <laughs> Calliope. <clears throat> and I do another call shot. Okay. Um, Where's the shot going this time? There's only uh, there's only one left, and he's arguing with himself. Yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna aim for one of the three personalities. Uh, <laughs> I and is he is his back still facing me? He's kind of facing uh, all over the place because he'll so jump like, to one spot. Yeah. Talk to himself, oh. and then jump in another spot to change his identity and talk to himself. Oh, would that make this shot harder then if he's moving? No, he's not? he's not moving in a large area. It's more like he's, you know, sidestepping. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna aim right for the right for the head again. I'm gonna take him out at the temple. I'm gonna be real gruesome like with this. Alright. <sighs> I mean, I guess I should correct myself and say, let's hope I take him out at the temple. No, no. Say with confidence. This is gonna happen. I'm just gonna do it. Tits up. Okay, so that's an eight. Uh, fourteen. Does that hit? That will uh hit. Let me see. Uh, sniffs high or low? 
Uh, shit. Low. He does not dodge. Nice. Oh, good. He was too busy arguing. Go ahead and roll damage. <clears throat> Eight. And that poor man. As the arrow enters his temple, the math identity gets the last laugh and says, See? Math would have saved you. <laughs> As he looks at the arrow in his head and then falls backwards. <clears throat> wow. Joke's on you, buddy. I failed algebra. And, uh, Again, the streets go quiet. Bodies laying all around you. The glinting of black from the uh, many moons shining down. Do those... Uh... Waylayers have anything good on them? Some daggers, some swords, one not great bow. These guys just look like thugs. Looking to uh, score an easy mark. Standard uh, stock thugs or specifically from the place where we just left from? Just standard they didn't have stock watchers. Thugs. No. Oh, okay. Wasn't sure. <clears throat> just want to like prop Amateurs. them up in a in a terrifying sort of way and just on, with blood from their blood on the wall just put <laughs> don't mess <laughs> with math <laughs> do math kids <laughs> <clears throat> I am simultaneously disappointed and impressed <clears throat> that some of your species has learned to use the blade it's such as efficiently as you have they obviously failed, while you obviously succeeded. I'm so glad that when I taught your ancestors how to use and kill with the blade, that it managed to perpetuate these teachings down the line and eventually get to you. Has anybody ever told you you're kind of a buzzkill know-it-all? <laughs> oh no, that would be a first, but thank you. I will take the compliment. Uh, Onward. Sure. All right, so you guys uh, continue on back to Chana's safe house. Yeah. And uh, you trudge on for like another 15, 20 minutes and are able to make it back there. You knock on the door. Chana is still there uh, with Omesh's mother. And he, did you quickly enter, shuts and locks the door. We've returned with more captives. One in particular, I believe, belongs to your uh, associates group. As Unfortunately, he, yeah. his mind has been broken. As the babbling man kind of like steps into the light, Itzel immediately recognizes him and like in a fit of joy and simultaneous sadness goes to run and like hug him where he immediately screams and tries to start like clawing at the door he's a little adult it's best just to leave him alone for now yes agreed give him time I will I will need to reach out to uh, an old associate of mine who is good with languages. He may be able to provide some information. What's what's wrong with him? He's who did this to mad. him? Oh, that would be Domina, the golden, the gilded one. You see that he's just like frantically looking around the room. He's going to need time to recover. 
Well, how long will this take? He'll let you know. Just don't rush him. He'll make sure like, he knows he's safe. But uh, what is his name? We've been calling him Hot. His name is Hot. So I said. She will reply and say his name is Zito. Zito? Zito Hot. Nailed it. Sounds exactly the same, right? <clears throat> Just make him like, I don't know, like a pallet on the floor. <clears throat> Make sure there's food and water around. Leave him be. And if you're patient, maybe he'll come back in some fashion, but you need to understand that the Zedel he was is probably dead. And I don't know, feed him sandwiches for like 30 weeks and he'll probably be fine. In fact, there was old Zedel pet hot self. This is what's left. That may be. Well, what of my other brothers and sisters? Wait, were they your siblings or just like? That's what I call all of my family. We found these few. The others, most likely dead. Yeah, someone took them before we even got there. Took them? But we, we know that they were taken. They were taken by the shrouded... No, I meant somebody came there and took them from the uh, who, they, they were kidnapped from their kidnappers. Who would do such a thing? Mm, very bad people. That is a very long list. <clears throat> they didn't want him. At this point, uh, Chana chimes in. Says, uh, I think that I may be of some assistance on this situation. I have learned from the Beggar King that someone has been taking steps against him. And it is probably the same person who has kidnapped the kidnappies from their kidnappers. And who might this be? He is known as Prince Me. Me? He resides on a void vessel named the Herald of Dawn. How do you spell his name? Uh, M I Y H. As a void ship? As a void ship. And what trade does this uh, prince? Engage in. Oh, sort he of business. All manners, mainly anything that brings him power, including the trade of other humans. Uh, usually doesn't 
deal in that. And then this would be an odd acquisition. It's most likely that our friends, brothers, and sisters have some type of power that they wish to exploit. He um, will use, um, I don't know what the right, <clears throat> I don't know if it would be observation or just plain awareness, but he would study, uh, Romeo would study um, uh, Chana and uh, Istil just to see if maybe they're just being uh, restrictive in the information that they're giving us for a specific reason. Like they, like, they're just like, Oh, there must be something special about all these people that are friends with this still zip. Uh, so he's just kind of studying them to see if, if, it, you know, over the eons, he's observed this sort of like hesitancy from humans uh, when it comes to, uh, giving details to people they care about or what have you uh give me socialize <laughs> yeah i do not have that um <laughs> <laughs> surprise uh, uh would that you can be... use awareness uh persuasion or presence i'll use presence that's my thing are you sure you're telling us everything i'm gonna you know look down at him <laughs> uh, see that that's a plus two and just make sure I don't have any checks. Okay. <laughs> I got a whopping two. <laughs> <laughs> I think that brings me down to like minus one. That's good, right? Well, was the accounts. It's true. <laughs> they seem to be giving up all information that they that they pretty much know <clears throat> okay i have no reason to be intimidating to them he's just kind of like are you sure you're telling us everything okay <laughs> when you when you do ask uh the ord that you are still carrying along with you steps up and in his uh you know high almighty kind of voice he says ah yes i know of this prince oh is he of your same cast sadly of the same cast and of the same species oh i see so he's a diminutive fellow like yourself he looks kind of like gives you like a, a eye. Stating the truth, but I am also a, very a frog <laughs> individual. Can do, can give. I'll take if, I, if I know the prince, is now what? What our friend has not told you is that the Herald of Dawn is a grand pleasure craft, only enhanced to serve as a void vessel for the prince. It is not a warship or anything. Although a, a prince does have many warriors at his disposal. But he is nothing more than a pompous brat looking for power. You sound like you know him. Well, there are not many of us, and we all visit the embassy at one point in time. Uh, is he younger than you? Younger than me? Yes. I do not understand your question. Hmm. Oh, oh, it's just the humans. Eat. They grow old and they die. Ah. <laughs> and it's just, uh, you called him a, a pompous brat. Uh, generally, uh, people only refer to those younger than them as brats. 
I believe that we have seen as many cycles that are the same. I see. My culture only understands time from the point that we meet the person. I have only met now met you. You are one year old. I mean, you know, that's as good as guess as any, like, because I don't know. Um, Very strange custom. Unusual. Intimate. How would one get on board this void craft then, if we are positive? that this prince is the one holding your compatriots. Would one do so with money or could one earn their way on board with skill? Chana will rub his chin. <clears throat> I don't think you're going to be able to just get on the ship and be welcomed, even with money. And if we were to engage in similar trades as your, as this uh, prince, perhaps as trading partners? Maybe if you had something good enough to trade with, but that would be something of extreme importance, something that would bring him power. He looks to our uh, Zittel, as I think that's, that's his name, right? Yes. Well, if he was interested in whatever properties belong to Istil's compatriots, then perhaps he would be interested in this one, since he seemingly did not acquire him. Chana looks at the, the raving man still like, like now he's chewing on a pillow. <laughs> this man has totally lost condition. his mind. <laughs> A mind can be mended, though, can it not? Well, I have to think, did the prince not acquire him or simply not wish to acquire him? Hmm. You hear him laughing at himself. <laughs> Perhaps if, if we are to, if we were to, uh, alleviate some of uh, our captives, uh, miladies, and perhaps this prince would find it useful or maybe assuaged to hold audience for someone such as him. I guess that would work. He did travel the void on or in an ortho unorthodox manner, did he not? He looks to this... Uh, Ramia looks to Istil. She says, well, we, we all did. That's how we got here. I'm presuming that that is the particular interest that the prince and others have taken on to you. Have they not? Is it not? Or is it something else? <clears throat> well, that has to be it. Well, Other than that, I don't, I don't know. Well, if that's the case, do you want to be our carrot on a stick? <laughs> I, I really don't want to. Do you want your siblings back? Mm -hmm. Of course I do. Then you want to be our carrot on a stick. This is a strange analogy. Perhaps uh, something more apt would be to say, to make the comparison of a, a worm on a very large hook. Oh. Frog in a pot? It's somehow worse. Chocolate oh. on a bunny. Or different bunnies. What is a bunny? <laughs> no clue. Oh, it is a delicious morsel of a creature. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. 
I, I mean, I think it goes without saying, my dear friend, we can't necessarily guarantee your safety, but we can at least guarantee you to be reunited with your family. In life or in, uh, in death. You're not helping. <laughs> Being reunited with my brothers and sisters is of the utmost importance to me. Well, then perhaps time is of the essence and we should mend uh, Zito's mind as soon as we can. In preparation for this meeting, of course. Chana will say that if it so pleases you, I will ask the beggar king if he will speak with you about the prince. I know that he holds no liking of the prince and may be able to set up a meeting or at least give you some type of insight to how to infiltrate the vessel. That would be ideal, yes. Hmm. It is completely up to you. I think we should go for it. We don't really have much else to go on. Yes, I enjoy this frog on a stick concept. I think a conversation with the beggar king would be wise. I'm kind of, I'm curious to see what makes a beggar a king. Mm -mm. See, he is the king of beggars. He is not a beggar himself. Yes, big difference. Mm -mm. So it's the greed. Let's do this. Yes. Uh, it's right around this time that uh, Mali like, well, I don't want to have anything to do with this, but I do appreciate you uh, getting me out of that horrible place. I will head back to the embassy. However, if you do need something, uh, please look me up. Mm, put in a good word for us. This is Sean well, speaking? No, uh, it's Mali. The frog. The, little, oh. the, the frog guy. Oh, God. <clears throat> it was a pleasure to meet you. What exactly could you provide in the way of help? Should we need help? Well, what type of help are you looking to get? Just an idea of what kind of services or goods you could provide to assist us. Out of character. I don't know like what this guy does. Like, is he like? Well, he has only talked about going back to the embassy, but okay. out of out of character, out of game, he is a merchant at heart. Okay. Hmm. And uh, he will negotiate a lot of things. It just depends on what you want. Okay. The Excellent. difficulty will change uh, depending on what you want. The, the Ord uh, are, are, are known to have their own void vessel. Uh, they have a lot of money. Uh, they could run... So he's like a politician we could pull strings from. Yeah. At some point. Cool. But with that, he takes his leave. But all of you will gain one point of Washta Wash with the Ord. O O R D. Nice. So anytime you are negotiating, talking with, or even mentioning for some type of gain, 
you can say that, oh yeah, I know Mali. So we'll give you a plus one on all social interactions involving them or mentioning them for your gain. Cool. Nice. Wash the Now you can lose Wasta if you misuse it. <laughs> like if we go around selling frogs legs or something like probably. Right, yeah, they're probably not gonna like that too much. Cool. All right. Uh but you can also raise it based on how you use it. Cool. I'm assuming now that we have a little bit of downtime, we can make proper introductions uh, with with one another. Now that we're back at the at the the secret safe house of Chana's, yes, uh, kind of let everybody know what's going on. We can find out how these other two uh, became captives of the uh, those assassin uh, people. And uh, uh, depending on how much time we have, we can reach out to other contacts and get more information while uh, or. Froggy from is uh, setting up a uh, or putting in a good word with the uh, sorry, uh, China's putting in a good word with the uh, Bear King. Is that correct? Yes. For a meeting. Okay. So, does anyone have contacts or uh, anything like that that they want like to try to use before we finish this up for the evening? I don't have contacts per se, like as the actual, as an actual like attribute or what have you. But I do have a, a, a old allegiance to uh, watchers. So if there's anybody that I can reach out to that could per perhaps like magically heal this guy's mind of his madness, or at the very least understand his gibberings to kind of like give us information, I'll reach out to them. All right, allegiances work similarly to contact, however. The price is more Super. severe. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And it's not always monetary. It may come as, oh, you owe us, you know, an extra five years of servitude. Right. But we will do this right now. Cool. Or, you know, you will owe them a favor. And the favors are not always great. No, they never are, usually. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else have uh, backgrounds of contacts or influence in any other area? Uh, uh, would with my set of folks, uh, is there like a place I could? you know, go to meet up with someone and inquire. Inquire about what? Uh, uh, healing this dude's mind or about the prince. She'll decide which one to inquire about when she gets there. So you also have owed allegiance. So you could go to whoever you owe allegiance to and ask. But again, like I said, uh, it comes at a steep price. Yeah, like that's what I was talking about. It's like, you know, like, you know, any kind of like out, like secret, you know, like place that I can meet up with someone from my organization. Let's see. Kind of uh, all I can get. Yes, you should be able to you know, ask your uh, ask your faction, the, the Boosla. Alright. So 
anyone here know? But you're going to have to go there. Well, no, yeah. Uh, sh she'll uh, leave a note with uh, Regidam. Who? Uh, Dave. Yes. <laughs> uh, like, what's your character's name? Regden. Regden. Uh, uh, we'll leave a note with Regden. Uh, won't say anything to him. We'll just give him a note. Uh, and it will tell him to tell the others, uh, to, uh, that she will be back in a couple hours. And if not, uh, to meet her in a, uh, a section of the city that's, uh, I'd say, like, by, like, a water fountain, like, near where, like, her place of residence is, but, like, not at her. Like, just, you know, be there in, like, two hours. Um, if I'm not back by then. We'll just, just hand the note, walk out, leave, and we'll go to that location. But I think we can do that, uh next Tuesday. Yes. So anyone who put out feelers, I will uh, get with you individually and we will find out some info that we can share with our friends when we come back next week. But it is the end of the night. And many of us need to head back to Earth because the void has hurt our brains severely. We must return to reality. But next Tuesday, we will continue our journey in hopes of solving these strange mysteries and these odd emanations that are threatening the way of life in the Eternal City. If you guys want to check out more terrifying tales, make sure you guys check out Cult Divinity Lost. That is on, that's on Sundays. Delta Green on Mondays, Mythos World late Monday nights. A little bit of Octung Cthulhu run by our very own Space Lord PJs on Wednesdays. And uh, of course, the Vorpal Chronicle of Darkness that continues on Thursdays. A Call of Cthulhu game, Masks of Nyar Lithotep on Fridays, which I am in. Yay. Yay. Our new Pathfinder story, Undying, that is going to be starting. Sad, right? I forgot to write it down. This weekend. And make sure that you are on the lookout for a new SCP RPG that is going to be happening late Saturday nights. Should be pretty exciting. However, if like Sean and Awesome Adventures is more your bag, make sure you guys check out Scarred Lands Draco Genesis Season 2 on Fridays. A new D&D &D campaign Usurpers of Ruination that is going to be starting this Saturday. And of course, Fiasco, the Murderists, that happens on Sunday. But make sure you guys check out the calendar for all of the changes that are happening. And of course, check out our website, verbaltales.com, to see all other social media links that we have, our recaps, and links to all of our partners and affiliates. But before we go, let the players... Let everyone know the next time that they can catch you and the cool things you do outside the show. Yes, hello. I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama, and tonight I have been Omesh. You can also find me on Thursday for our Mage the Awakening game. Go check it out. It'll be great. Hi, I'm Eric. Uh, this evening I played uh, Ramiel. And uh, you can catch me again on Monday for Delta Green and Mythos World. Hi, my name is Ray Alexa. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at RHastaway. 
And you can see me again on Saturday. Uh, I will be playing in that D&D game. I'm very excited. It's been a long time since I've had an opportunity to play in a D&D campaign and not just uh, DM one. Uh, so, and then you can see me again uh, here next Tuesday. Hey there, I'm at Space Lord PJs. You can find me tomorrow uh, playing with some people who are fucking up Nazis and Cthulhu at the same time. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm Dave. I played Resden this evening. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Twin Dead Twitches. Um, you can find me here on Tuesday nights and on Friday nights playing in Massive Neural Um And that's where you'll find me. Hello, folks. I am Selkie. You can find me everywhere online as Rebel Selkie, except for that one place. And boy, oh boy, when I find that person who stole my name, um, you are going to get nothing but phone calls about your, um, the, uh, God, what is it called? That thing on your car. They keep wanting to get you to renew the uh, expired card, whatever. Oh, your, your <laughs> warranty. Your car your warranty. warranty. Thank you. I'm just, you're yeah. just taking warranty. warranty calls until you give me back my name. That's oh, it. shit. You're going to dox um, the fuck out of someone. Wow. Awesome. Right? Uh, so I use she, her pronouns. Uh, you can find me online at Twitter, the Rebel Selkie. Drop me a coffee if you love me so much. It's on my Twitter. I also am um, online and in person in Buffalo, New York at Gathering Game Buffalo. Um, I am educator, lead educator and small press curator at this wonderful little bookshop. So follow us there. And if you want to see more of me doing tomfoolery or not, um, I am playing Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at night for probably forever. So you've been beautiful and lovely. Hey everybody. That's it. Oh, I didn't even realize that that was everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, as Tyler elo so eloquently puts it all the time, it's time for the ride or die fans. It's vote time. Yes. So vote for your favorite player of the evening. Uh, as I have said to the old players, and I will tell the new players once again, uh, cast votes will give you a free re a one reroll per vote. Any vote that you gain from uh, the chat is good for recovering sanity, because recovering sanity is not easy. Who's first? Uh, same order. Tie. Okay. Ah, uh, my vote this night goes to Ramael. Just for uh, I wanted to, uh, I have to give special mention to uh, Sean because uh, killing people with math is always awesome. <laughs> and, uh, and for Key, just for that scene with uh, with Omesh's mother, that was a really good scene. Uh, but I wanted to give uh, some of our new players some love, so I, I want to give it to uh, uh, Selkie uh, for uh, Calliope and the bucket of shit, which was my favorite part of that, that <laughs> entire scene. Bucket of shit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> bucket of shit. Nice. Ray? Uh, I would like to give my vote to Ramael. Um, I love that he he like in his own little way he always like whenever him and Bianca talk he, he, he's always kind of like challenging her a little bit like like what she's like do? it's like like she, she, he kind of turns her into like this, like teenager a little bit. Like I'm not scared. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give my vote to Reshden for just being like a very pleasant escapee, very, very courteous. 
I'm like, hello. <laughs> I am going to toss mine over to Ramael as well. Found the character very interesting. I'm looking forward to more. Ooh, boy, howdy. Um, Y'all were wonderful. This is going to be a wonderful game. Um, And I think I'm going to have to toss my vote to uh, Omesh because magic and you found your mom. Uh, and also your character is also very interesting. So cool. awesome being awesome to each other. Yeah. But with that all said and done, we must now depart our side of the cosmos and like I said, return to earth. But when you all look at the stars, please remember us and the sacrifices that we make for all of sentient beings across the space and time. But don't stare too long, else the void will take you. Good night. Good night.